I'll leave my truck as just breaking daylight and I'll hunt my way in and then I'll set up because yeah. like most of the time, I've never killed a buck during the rut in the spots I set up first thing in the morning. Mine are always like after nine o'clock and then all the way through like near two o'clock or like my, I swear when the clock strikes noon, I better just draw my bow back because that's when I always see. So you, so you, your way in at daylight. Yeah. Okay. I hunt my way in, I'll grunt and kind of, yeah, you and then, know. And then climb? Yep. I was going to cover a bunch of acreage right here and me and Hagen are going to go over. Probably we're going to be three or four hundred yards from him and going to cover another drainage area. Uh, should be a good morning. It's clear. Got a good breeze. A uh, little chilly. But we're hoping for the best. Get bow on a big southern West Virginia buck. Feels good. Feels it does. good this morning. I just wanted to check a spot to where we're going over to kind of get out and glass for a little bit. I just wanted to check it before we got over there and blew anything out so that we can glass all this area back to our right and behind us. It's a little bit nippier out there than what I'm, uh, I was uh, hmm, <laughs> figuring. Uh, pretty, pretty chilly. All right, it's the first morning here in Southern West Virginia. We've got Josh and Hagen, cameraman there about three, four hundred yards behind me. And they're gonna glass a different basin while I'm sitting here glassing this finger ridge that we hunt or we spotted uh, a doe that was being chased by a one horn spike and then another spike that came behind her. So just in case she's hot and left a scent trail here, I'm gonna sit here and glass this in the morning and see what we can find. We're kind of dividing and conquering some of those open reclaim strip mine landscape. So she must have caught my wind. And uh, Josh texted me that him and Hagen had found about a 115 inch nine point with some does over there. Look straight down in and you can see her, you can see the side of her face. And then you can see that buck's nose back here. I think we got a yard right here, but look straight down my arm.
So Bo and I have been glassing. I don't even know what time it is. It's 9.15, so we've been glassing for about three hours. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna jump back in the truck. It was cool, we had a, a decent buck. It had a doe locked down for a long time back here. We were just gonna wait and see if, if she pulled another buck into us. Uh, Bo's got all week to hunt, so he opted to pass. He might regret it. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> I was really tempted. <laughs> well, he, Josh called me over and he's like, I got this buck out in front of me. So I started working that direction and I sneak up. To, luckily, I snuck up to the hill here where he's glassing because there's a 70, 80 yards right down below. He had her locked down and uh, and then as they're walking away, I was really tempted. Oh, yeah. yeah. The whole time, like, Josh, so how, how would you go about putting this <laughs> Well, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd be more than happy with that deer. It's just early in the hunt. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. I'm having fun. And it's going to be a good week. Yeah. But we're going uh, to jump back in the truck, drive another half, three-quarter mile, and get out and cover a bunch more acreage. After uh, doing some, well, bunch of glassing and finding some deer here this morning, we're moving around checking out some other spots and Josh had pointed out this point that came off the side of the, um, I guess off the side of the strip. Yeah, so this would be your ridge line. I know you can't see it because it's all been took off because of the mining operations, but there's a beautiful point that's not normal for our area. That lays really good, so Bo had a good idea and go scout that point real quick. It won't take us an hour. Uh, maybe we'll get into something that we really that we see that we really really like. It's hot, like hot right now. Yeah, and, and we figured if we even if we do find something hot, and we blew something out. We'll just we'll wait and we'll keep doing yeah. what we're doing and come in in yeah. a couple days or tomorrow afternoon or whatever, and uh, you know kind of go from there. But I think it's looks too good not to at least take a look at i agree with that if we find a big old car hood scrape there then uh we might not be leaving for for a while <laughs> but might just stay i might stay in the tree for a couple days <laughs> it ain't gonna be quiet man. Looks like the leaf. 
find and then potentially come back in a couple days and hunt it but hunt it back out a little bit further depending on what we find it's just really crunchy in here loud hard to get in and sneak in at all so right where it meets at the the edge of this trip job i think is a it's a pretty good funnel place Yeah, he's a shooter. up here in the morning. Yeah, there's no way we can get across here without them. It's, it's one of them things, man, where you're, uh, you know, you're going, and like we were going down, and I don't know if he, you know, came up here while we were going down, because he came across this bench here. We were on the right bench for him to keep it coming. Yeah. But I think when he got to this corner, he veered. Yeah, he started aiming up. Yeah. And then... And I think he's on our level we heard those grunts. That's right. The sun was still up. 
we got to the bench above him where we last saw him. But as that buck come on around through here, he veered to come up here on this bench actually where we're at. And Bo grunted a couple times. And it, it, I mean, honestly, it was a pretty, it was a great setup. Yeah, it was, I, I don't think we could have changed anything like as far as what we knew. Nice. And, and then we, uh, well, what we, oh, you saw him, Hagen saw him go up over the hill. So we started coming up, but we were just a little bit too late. And as soon as my hat got above the hill, I saw him there making a scrape. And he didn't notice us at that time, but he, I don't know if he heard or maybe he did see movement, I don't know. But he kind of looked over this way and then he started angling down and going down over the hill. And at that point, we were kind of stuck in the water as far as he was on alert looking our way. And then as soon as I wanted to be able to draw him, he, yeah, he took him. off, yeah. Start packing the mail. But that's what happens, I mean, when you're spotting and stalking and you lose line of sight with the animal, it's always a gamble. I mean, that's part of it. That I mean, was incredible. When you can't, it's like you're in a frantic mode. Yeah. Like I'm down there and you're looking over where he should be coming. And I'm like, he should be here. Yeah. And like I'm looking down the bench, I'm looking up, trying to figure out where he's at. Because he was moving the whole time. From the time we fought saw him, he was moving. So I figured he was going to be moving. But it is what it is. We'll get back after it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, it's going to get dark on us. I'll tell you what, though, this is a blast. Oh, yeah. Is it not? It's the best thing in the world. This is like, yeah. I mean, how do you not explain it? Bo came close to killing a 155 inch nine point. Bo spotted a buck way across through there. And we're kind of, kind of in limbo right now. We saw another buck, like a six point. And we're just kind of seeing He's gonna keep on working his way downhill, or what, to come up with a game plan. We'll see here. He kinda came out, but he's standing There he comes. Oh, you beautiful, beautiful animal.
Hey, you're on speakerphone, just FYI. Alrighty. Hey, um... Hey, Mr. Martonic. How you doing? Hey, this is Josh. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, I, I was just... Yeah. Well, I, I was I was calling to see if there was any family history on heart attacks or anything, or any, any type of anxiety attacks or anything like that, because I can't get Bo calmed down. <laughs> oh, there may be a little bit of that. <laughs> After looking at the footage and everything else with the shot, we're gonna go in and try to find my arrow and see whether we wanna push forward and go toward and follow the blood trail or if we need to back out for a little bit. It looks good, feels good, but gotta sneak in there and just check that arrow first and go from there. Talking about a good sign to open up that base. Yeah. That ain't a bad sign. Blood's looking good. So he's heading uphill, but this is just about where where we had uh, heard him crash. And so hoping he's not too far up ahead. Come all the way up the hill, topped over. Yeah. And I know we got good blood finally coming up the hill. Now he could be laid up there 100 yards, but he could also be across this flat and down that thicket. And when we got up here with lost blood, I just think we'd come back at daybreak. I know it sucks for you. You won't sleep none. Yeah. But it's up to you. No, I agree. I think, I, I don't think there's any reason now to try to search any longer or, or risk bumping him in case he is. You know, injured for almost 300 yards. I've been tracking it on the Spartan Ford jab, and I marked a waypoint right at the last blood, and I just titled it "Last Blood." Use that icon, and then color coded it red, so that we have a quick starting point to come back to in the morning. It sucks to have to leave him overnight like this, but I think it's the best decision with being able to recover this deer. So we got up here to where we stopped tracking last night. And kind of the game plan is get over here and see if we can't find some blood in this high grass and this brush. And this flat goes over to a thicket on this side slope. So get over here and we got some help. See what we can find. Um, had deer around us all night, small six or seven point, or I'm not even sure what he was, came in um, very close, had him at like 10 feet at one point. And just before dark, then it was, yeah, just before dark, just before last shooting light, we had this big eight point, big mature, burly looking eight point come in and came in on a string because I'd grunted right before that. And he came in coming right at us at us and he went up and started putting his head up in the scrape and and I was ready at full draw at that point and then when his legs hit the ground he looked like he was just slightly quartering to. It looked like to me when he went in to make the scrape and go in the tree that he was just a easy quarter. Yeah barely. But when he came down it looked like when he came down he kind of twisted and when we were reviewing it on the camera last night sitting in the truck giving it time to lay down or what what not it looked it that still looked the same that it wasn't a real hard quarter to uh, yeah but then when we when Bo and I got back to the office last night and put it on the computer when that deer landed as soon as he landed Bo and I both was like man yeah he, and he, he was it. yeah he, he came was... down and was like this and it was a steep quarter to at that point yeah and he, and he had put his head in the the branches there and stuff and I actually went through and screenshotted the, the stills and in about a half a second he went from 
being in a decent position that I, even though he was slightly quarter and two is still very very good shot at that angle off the ground and he, when he twisted like that and i'm looking through that peep sight i'm looking through that peep sight going through my shot execution and he had twisted into it and was definitely not an angle that i wanted and when i shot um we weren't sure last night where we where he hit we thought it was in front of the shoulder Looked like it hit it hit the shoulder and went in because we couldn't find the arrow. But after reviewing the footage and seeing the situation um, even more, it looks like what happened was is I basically hit low and yep. just caught his shoulder. Yep. Um, so a non-vital hit. I mean, we had seven and of us looking yeah, today. So we made a couple of phone calls last night, got some help this morning. We pretty much covered where well, we started. To start off, we started from last blood last night. We picked up from it this morning. Hagen found some blood, but it was very sporadic. Yep. And all of us pretty much gridded. I don't know how many acres. Yeah, a ton. I mean, a ton looking for blood tracks and looking for the deer. And no beds, no more blood. A non-lethal hit yeah and and it makes sense too the way that we found the blood is the blood was all as we were going up it was going up the hill he went straight up over and he, he was pumping it out as he's moving you know he's yeah. moving and that blood was coming out once he got up on that easy flat on the top he just stopped bleeding and you know that's that can be very i mean that goes right in line with a muscle hit yeah you know, or a leg hit and um so i mean that deer is going to be fine it's just very unfortunate situation and the one other thing that uh we definitely we noticed there was what what i had ranged that spot at was 34 yards and where it ended up being at was 38 yards i don't know if it was a brush and low light i didn't see when i ranged it or if he was just standing a little bit further back than then I, I don't really know exactly. Right. I mean, I didn't range him there. You ranged, the, ranged tree. the tree. Yeah, and I figure he was a yard and a half or two yards behind yeah. the tree, but then we ranged it later on. The original range, we were off four or five yards, and then you add a yard or two of where the deer was standing, and the arrow's coming in low anyway. Yeah, but there was, but you know, okay, so there was a couple situations that were, you know, tough as far as the yardage being a little bit off, and then also the quartering two harder than I had originally thought. But with the biggest learning lesson from me with that was, was reading that deer as he was coming in. Right. And he had no idea that we were there. He was zoned out, coming in. Like the other Comfortable. Deer that, yeah, the other deer that came in was kind of weary when I grunted. You know, he was looking for something, couldn't see it. You know, so he skirted around us. This deer was coming in on a string. And if I would have just been patient and waited, he would have came in, I bet, you know, would have been 20 yard chip shot and that's again that's 100 percent my fault i own that it was just uh yeah i didn't i didn't read didn't but that read was emotions right that takes us into your week-long hunt in southern west virginia yeah ground hunting yeah because that's what we, we we were prepared to grab our tethered saddles and climb but bo and i talked and we opted to ground hunt the whole week yeah that's where we were seeing the action we Got on a big buck Tuesday evening. Then we fought some weather, warm weather, fought the rain. Uh, but all in all, it was a great week. I mean, I hope that you, because I know that you normally don't hunt with this type of strategy. No, it was it was completely different than anything that I've ever done. I've hunted off the ground before, but never white tails like full on glassing, glassing and going. Yeah, I mean, like that's completely different. Typically, like my style of ground hunting would be more still hunting. Right, I'm sneaking around and and waiting was, and listening. Yeah, calling. I, yep. Yeah, and this was completely different. And I, you know, towards the end of the week, Josh was like, "You want to go hang in the tree?" I said, "No, I want to continue to do this." Like, yeah. I had so much fun. It is now just because you can see deer doing that does not mean it's easy <laughs> by any means that is something that that it was uh, it was super difficult because i mean you have to have them either bed or see where they're going to a location like we have with that big nine point earlier in the week he was going around this bench system in that valley field and and we had to get down to his level and then he'd bumped up and it was it's it's very difficult it's very difficult everything really to has to come out. together and you have to know 
uh, deers, that, that buck's like nuances, watching him, yeah. reading them. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun way to hunt, and I hope you enjoyed the week. Uh, we gave that deer a valiant effort this morning. I mean, we look for him from daylight until now, and it's, it's right, you know, midday. So um, I hate that that happened to you. I hope that you come back and hunt with us. Uh, you're more than welcome anytime. It was a good week. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to come back. I told you, I said, this is one of my favorite places that I've ever bow hunted. And uh, Bo's already called the real estate agent. He's looking, he's <laughs> looking for a house down here. <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs>